And so the car... Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser RC. Today I want to go over some stuff that I was able to recently pick up on the used market, and some of it is to me related. Over the past week or so, if you attend any of the kind of RC hangouts that happen on a weekly basis, Thursday nights uh, RC talk on the Tank RC channel, Friday nights on Steve OD 313's channel, uh, we get together and we talk about random stuff that comes up. And lately I was talking about my experience at the Canadian On-Road Nationals and, uh, and a lot of the radios and, and racing related gear that I saw. So for my entire racing career, I've used ready-to-run radios. And I typically run the Traxxas TQI system. This is their most modern radio that they have. And the big benefit to me is I install the Bluetooth module into the radio, and that allows me to use the app on my phone, and that allows me to quickly um, have it set my endpoints, my exponential, my dual rate, all of the settings, the calibrations, all of the little things that you can tweak on a racing-style radio, on the ones, the fancy radios you buy with a computer screen, you can do that on a Traxxas radio if you buy the Bluetooth app. Uh, so I love that, and it, it allows multi-model memory. You know, allows up to, allows you to pair your ready-to-run radio up to like hundreds of models. Now you can do all that stuff without the Bluetooth module, but you have to use these two little buttons on top and figure out what the lights mean, and it's it's a nightmare. So get the Bluetooth module uh, if you want to just run ready-to-run stuff. But in my racing now, I'm kind of at the point now where the radio frequency is actually making a difference. And when I went to the Nationals, when you look at all of the A main drivers that are there, a lot of them were running Sanwa. Now Sanwa is a rebrand that used to be called Airtronics in North America. It was always Sanwa in the Asian markets, but, uh, but now Airtronics, they've dropped that name off and now Sanwa is the, is the primary name. The, the top of the world A main drivers are mostly running Sanwa because the actual radio frequency that's going between the car and the radio is the fastest. Uh, they have it down to like sub one millisecond in their highest, highest end radio systems, whereas this Traxxas, it runs at around 13 milliseconds. After seeing that I decided you know I've resisted all this time maybe I should start seeking around and seeing who has radios for sale. So I went into my Facebook marketplace and I typed in Sanwa and I found a bundle deal uh, and it wow what a bundle deal it was. I made an offer on it and he accepted so I was like all right well we'll see if he can mail it to me and then the mailing was going to be expensive because he had all of the retail boxes and it was going to be a big package. So I decided I would go and drive and get it. Let me show you what that stuff is. First of all, as I said, I searched for Sanwa. So this is the radio system. It's a Sanwa MT4, and this is the uh, first radio that came out in the uh, FH4 protocol, uh, which is their faster protocol, as well as it has telemetry. It was one of the first Sanwa radios that has telemetry on it. So we got the box, and uh, there's really not much more to show you on that, but I'll, uh, I'll show you the radio here real quick. Oh, it does have a screen on it. This radio is a full uh, customized computerized style radio system where you can have, here's all your settings and then here's your telemetry screen. So you can actually get RPM and voltage monitoring and all that kind of stuff on it. They did not install a backlight in it for some reason. So that's about the only downside to the screen versus a modern one. Uh, even if you get a radio that they come out with in the past year or two, it's a very similar screen, it's just it lights up. So this one doesn't light up, you have to be in an area where you can actually see it. Um, some of the big, huge advantages of going to a racing style radio, just beyond what I talked about with the radio frequency being a lot better, is just the fit and finish and the feel of the wheel and the trigger. So there's two particular things I noticed. I did race with this on the weekend and you will see some future videos about me using this radio for the first time and, and my performance with it. But for the most part, the biggest thing that you're gonna notice is the granularity in the trigger. So with the Traxxas one, the trigger, if you try and go very slowly, it's, it's very notchy, right? That's about as smooth as I can pull it. And on this guy here, you can pull it very smooth. It's silky smooth, it's quiet. It's such a, such a humongous difference. You can hear it. Now the wheels are a similar range of motion and the wheels don't feel that much different physically. 
Although this one is fully adjustable where you have tensioning screws, you can adjust the weight of it, the feel of it. Same with the trigger, you can adjust the range of the trigger, how it's angled, there's a bunch of adjustments. There's physical adjustments to all the controls to tune it to your hand, how you like it to feel. The biggest thing I noticed with the wheel is because with the faster radio signal transmission, there's a lot more fidelity in the signal. So you can feel the ever so slight movement of the wheel, it relates to the car. You can feel it happen. This radio is around possibly even eight years old. I think it came out around like 2012, 2011 possibly. It's not new, but it's new enough where it is still competitive. And this is considered an upper mid-range radio. Uh, what the time when this came out, the highest end one was the M11. This is the MT4. Now on the market, the highest end radio is the M17. Uh, a lot of people are running instead the highest end radio one generation prior, which is the M12S. And, uh, and the current radio like this that's on the market would be the MT44. So if you're looking for a new, brand new out of the box uh, Samwa radio, take a look at those models. And this kit came with all of the full manuals. I got all the full manuals. It even still has the stickers. Like this thing was never looked at it seems this is a super crisp book as well as it came with all of the little accessories so you do get an additional grip to for the size of your hands this rubber grip on the controller can be removed and you can put this other one on which makes it a bigger grip uh, as well as it came with all of the sensors and telemetry so it came with a temp sensor and an rpm sensor uh, all the little tuning blocks that you can have to uh, to adjust the trigger sweep and angle an extra transmitter battery block, and a power switch. So that's the radio, and I have been using it, and it's great. Now the next thing that was part of the bundle was, it was not just a radio, it was a radio and a car. So the car, a Tamiya TA06 Pro. This is a really interesting thing for me because I built a brand new TA07 Pro this season and I've been upgrading it and tweaking it and getting it running for racing and it's been great fun. This is the generation prior to that and it's got some interesting quirks to it where it seems like the theme of this car was all about having the weight on the center line. So this is just the retail box. Uh, not a whole lot that you can see on there, but let me pull the car out for you. I'll put in a picture right now of the car, how it was, how I got it out of the box, because it was a mess. Uh, I think this guy didn't necessarily know what he had. It's a weird mix where it was all fairly high-end equipment, but just built pretty terribly. This is the car after it's been cleaned up, and I've taken most of the electronics out, so now it's just a fairly clean chassis. But this chassis is really unique. So first of all, you see how it's got the can it's got the lay down shocks on the front. So it's got a cantilever style push rod suspension on the front. And the motor is in the center line and the rear is I mean it's an on-road racing car. There's no front shock tower because you don't need one because the shocks are laying down. That's why it's super duper flat at the front. So that's pretty cool. It is a dual belt design. Let me pull the camera in so you can see a little bit better. So it's got this little pulley up front between these two and then the longer pulley here all the way to the back to the rear motor. And uh, I'll get into the motor and the speed control that came with this too, because this was not just a roller. This was a full system. And uh, here's all the parts and stuff I've pulled out of it. So here's the body posts, which are not on the car right now. This is the, uh, the battery tray, which I'll show you in a minute, a sensor cable for the motor, some extra parts, and the battery that was in it, which is really odd that it was a, that's why I said it was a weird mix of stuff. This is an old Venom Power nickel metal hydride, 4200 milliamp hour battery. That's super heavy. And the battery sits in the center line. So how you put the battery in this car is you flip it upside down and the battery sits in here. It is a plastic tub chassis and it's all JIS style screws and the battery you're supposed to uh, put in like this. You put the wiring down and then the, you set the battery in inside of the chassis tub and then you screw on that plate and that's your, that's your battery system. For a racing car you'd think that's kind of hard to get at the battery and it is so I guess they just thought that you would be charging your car, charging your battery in the car a lot because it's kind of tricky to get in and out. There's a couple things that jumped out at me incorrect right off the beginning. 
Overall, it's got the good TRF419 suspension. Most of the stuff is good, except for look at the direction of the wheels and tires. So here we have a directional going in the proper way, and here's going the wrong way, wrong way, right way. <laughs> and if you took all of these wheels off, that would mean that he glued all of the tires on going the same way on all the wheels. He forgot, the person who built these and glued these on forgot that when you have a directional tread, you have to put the other side on the opposite direction. They glued all the tires on the same way, so that's why some of the tires are reverse rotation. The Servo is an Airtronics, uh, just to, I had to look up the number, it's an Airtronics budget basic servo, it's analog. So, uh, so there's that, and the motor is a Tekin. Surprisingly, it is a that is a high-end brand. So it's got a Tekin 8.5 turn brushless motor. And it had the sensor cable hooked up and the wiring was not soldered onto the motor. But here's the speed control. The speed control is also a Tekin. Well, a Tekin RS Pro. Wow. That's a really good 10th scale racing uh, racing ESC with some of the worst soldering on it I've ever seen. So I've got a lot of cleanup to do here um, because that is atrocious. So I'm hoping that it's not blown up and uh, and hopefully I can resurrect it. We did hook it up to uh, to USB just to check its firmware at the racetrack. Someone had the Tekken Hotwire and it worked. So we were able to update the firmware on it and it works enough uh, to, that, to that respect. So I got to clean up all this. This is actually a really good ESC. The money here is actually quite extensive. So we've got like a, a fairly expensive ESC, a fairly expensive motor, a car that was, you know, in the upper mid range of Tamiya stuff back in the day, and then a radio system as well that is upper mid range. That I don't think he knew what he had. So with Tekken, with Tekken Electronics, a TA06 Pro, a Sanwa MT4, a really nice telemetry receiver, which I've already taken out the receiver. I've put it in my racing car and I raced it. It works fantastic. The feel of this radio on the track compared to the Traxxas, and yes, it is a little bit embarrassing to go to a big event with my Traxxas TQI. So I was also, from that respect, I was looking, you know, if I'm gonna be traveling around a bit more, um, you know, I want to get a better performing radio system, not so much for the computerized stuff, but for the better trigger and wheel and faster RF protocol. So I am quite pleased with this. This was the reason why I bought it. This stuff was bonus. The other interesting thing with this car is that it was really not in a running state. Um, look at the mesh. Look at the gear mesh here. It's like barely even touching. If, if he was going to run this, it was going to strip out immediately. So I don't know if the motor shifted or whatnot, but that's the state of the gearing. And it looks like it's 48 pitch instead of 64, which is a little bit odd. Anyway, um, like it's just barely touching. So everything needs to be saved on this thing. Like the chassis is okay. It needs a couple things tightened up and adjusted here and there. I'm going to remove the motor. I'm going to save this ESC. I'm most likely going to keep the ESC, keep the motor, sell the chassis, and keep the radio system. And uh, and yeah, so that is where we're at. This is the Tamiya TA06 Pro. And if you wanna see a bit more about these, the weirdo front design, that's how that works. It's got a little pivot. Yeah. All right, guys, so that's my Tamiya Tuesday and uh, used RC equipment haul update video. So I'm really excited to be running a Sandwall radio system now. It made a huge difference on the track, and so now I'm looking to get some additional receivers as well. I'm going to keep all of my basher cars on Traxxas because it works fine for that. There's some things on Traxxas that it actually does better for multi-model uh, maintenance and stuff where it auto detects your model, and on a higher end radio system, a racing radio system, you have to go into the menu and choose your model and do some like annoying fiddly stuff every time. Well, there's some advantages to the Traxxas system, but for higher end racing, you want the fastest radios possible, and that's why I chose Sanwa. As for the car, it's just a really cool car. I wanted to show it off to you. I mean, it's pretty unique, this uh, this TA06 Pro. Yeah, I've never seen one before in person, so it's pretty neat. It's got some Tamiya TRF blue components on it, but um, overall, it's, it's just a weird Tamiya chassis. So this radio has got a bunch of extra functions. It is a four channel radio. So this is one of the channels. Aux channel is a lever. There's another uh, dial over here. This is another channel. 
Uh, you've got four digital trims. These two here are adjustable. Well, all four of them are programmable to be whatever you want. The, uh, the wheel is adjustable with these little set screws down here for tension. Same with the trigger. It's all adjustable with the set screws uh, that are all over the place. You can adjust the sweep and angle and feel. And then in the computer system, you can go into the menus in here. This is what it looks like when you first boot it up. And uh, if you just scroll over one, then you're at your telemetry screen. You click the wheel to get into your menus. So uh, here's where you go in and you set all your menu settings. It has lap timers. You've got all kinds of advanced functionality in here. So I did go through the book quite a bit because there's a couple of interesting things. In, in order to get the fastest response time, you do have to go into s system. And in bind, you want to make sure that you're set up for FH4T mode and that you have your steering and throttle in SHR. In order to use it in super high response, you do have to have a digital servo uh, and an ESC that supports it. So you would try those two settings and, and as, long as, you have an, as long as you have a digital servo, it'll work. Uh, for the ESC, it works with some ESCs. Uh, in my case, it has worked. Uh, in normal mode, the response rate is around 11 milliseconds. In SHR mode, you're looking at around a 5 to 4 millisecond uh, response time. And there's one mode better, which is called SSR, and that is for Sanwa-specific ESCs and servos, and that gets you even more fidelity in your signal. Now, when you change your modes, you do have to rebind your receiver. So yeah, I like this thing a lot, so I'm on the hunt for more receivers. I just ordered one on eBay tonight that is a third-party one, uh, and uh, I'm going to try that. It is a FH4T protocol receiver. Alrighty, guys, so that's my update. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.